The information presented in this video is based on the writings of Dr. Catherine Burnett, a veterinarian. Today, we're going to discuss hypothyroidism, one of the most common endocrine diseases diagnosed and treated by general veterinary practitioners. Canine hypothyroidism is one of the most commonly diagnosed endocrine diseases in veterinary hospitals. This condition is most commonly diagnosed in middle-aged dogs with an average rate of onset of approximately four to seven years. However, in some cases, it can occur as early as two to three years of age. This is important to note because early onset hypothyroidism may go undiagnosed if the veterinarian assumes that hypothyroidism is solely a disease of older dogs. The most common breeds affected by this endocrine condition include Golden Retrievers, Doberman Pinsers, Dachshunds, Irish Setters, Schnauzers, Miniature Poodles, Cocker Spaniels, Chow Chows and English Bulldogs. Other breeds that are also prone to hypothyroidism are the Great Danes, Newfoundlands, Airedales, Irish Wolfhounds, Scottish Deerhounds, and Afghan Hounds. Hypothyroidism is more common in pets that are spayed and neutered, however, there is no known sex predisposition. The clinical signs of hypothyroidism are produced by decreased production of the hormones thyroxine, which is also known as T4, and the hormone triothyroidinone, which is commonly known as T3. In a normal dog, the thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, which is released by the pituitary gland, stimulates the thyroid gland to produce T3 and T4. In a dog with hypothyroidism, this process does not occur normally. Therefore, decreased levels of the hormones T3 and T4 are produced. These hormones play an important role in body metabolism, growth and development. Hypothyroidism in dogs can be classified into three groups. The first group is primary hypothyroidism, which accounts for 95% of the diagnosed cases in the canine population. In this group, the cause of the problem is within the thyroid gland itself. Lymphocytic thyroiditis is the most common cause of primary hypothyroidism. This is an autoimmune response where lymphocytic infiltrates destroy thyroid gland tissue. In lymphocytic thyroiditis, we're going to notice that the thyroid stimulating hormone levels begin to increase in an effort to compensate for the decreasing levels of T4 and T3. Idiopathic thyroid atrophy is another cause of primary hypothyroidism. Thyroidism. In this case, normal thyroid tissue is replaced by adipose and connective tissue without the presence of observable inflammatory cells. Nobody knows the exact causes of idiopathic thyroid atrophy, but some researchers suspect this is simply the end stage of lymphocytic thyroiditis. Neoplasia is the third cause of primary hypothyroidism in dogs, but is also the less common reason for this endocrine condition. Although less common than primary hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism can also occur as a secondary condition. Secondary hypothyroidism is used to describe cases of decreased TSH production or activity. The most common causes of decreased TSH in dogs are pituitary neoplasia, pituitary malformations and TSH suppression caused by drugs or disease. Congenital hypothyroidism has also been reported in dogs. Although this condition is rare, causes of congenital hypothyroidism include thyroid dysgenesis, iodine deficiency during the fetal or newborn stage, dyshormonogenesis, T4 transport defects, and goitrogens. The most common clinical signs associated with canine hypothyroidism are lethargy, weight gain, exercise intolerance, and skin disease. It's very typical to hear a dog owner complaining that the dog is slowing down or getting old if affected by this endocrine condition. Common skin conditions associated with canine hypothyroidism include the following. Bilaterally symmetrical alopecia, dry brittle hair coat, skin hyperpigmentation, seborrhea, which may be greasy and scaly with a foul odor, poor wound healing, slowed hair growth after shaving, tragic facial expression, thickening of the skin folds. The ophthalmologic complications of hypothyroidism include corneal lipid deposits, which occur secondary to hyperlipidemia, and dry eye. The neurological signs of hypothyroidism in dogs include the following peripheral neuropathies that usually lead to the development of megaesophagus, laryngeal paralysis, 
and abnormal function of the cranial nerves 5, 7 and 8. These neuropathies are thought to be produced by mucopolysaccharide accumulation within the nerves or abnormal mitochondrial function. The signs of myopathy are often subtle and can be difficult to distinguish from the typical lethargy seen in this endocrine condition. Muscle biopsies usually show evidence of type 2 muscle atrophy. The physiologic causes of this problem are unknown, but it is thought to be associated with abnormalities in carbohydrate metabolism or mitochondrial activity. Although it is not typically associated with hypothyroidism in dogs, there have been cases of myasthenia gravis reported in the scientific literature. When presented with a dog suspected of having hypothyroidism, we must begin the diagnostic protocol by performing a CBC, biochemical profile, urinalysis and check the T4 levels. In 25% of cases, the CBC shows evidence of mild non-regenerative anemia. This is caused by erythropoietin deficiency, decreased bone marrow activity, and decreased serum iron binding capacity. The biochemical profile shows fasting hypercholesterolemia in 75% of the cases. This is caused by changes in lipid metabolism, decreased conversion of lipids to bile acids, and decreased fecal excretion of cholesterol. In 30% of cases, the biochemical profile can also show evidence of mild hyponatremia. This is caused by increased total body water secondary to decreased renal excretion. The urinalysis results can vary from being unremarkable to show evidence of other metabolic conditions that can be affecting the patient. The T4 levels can be below the reference range. Many veterinarians see the low T4 and stop there diagnosing hypothyroidism. Unfortunately, this is not an accurate approach. A dog's T4 levels could be decreased for a number of reasons, including not only hypothyroidism, but also age, breed, medications, and systemic illness. Because T4 levels are not a reliable way to diagnose hypothyroidism in dogs, we must use additional tests to obtain a confirmation of the diagnosis. When attempting to confirm hypothyroidism in dogs, Free T4 levels can provide a more reliable method of testing. Free T4 is the metabolic active fraction of T4, representing T4 that is not protein bound in the blood circulation. Free T4 is more than 97% specific for canine hypothyroidism. Free T4 is not typically affected by drugs or illness to the extent that total T4 it is affected, though it can sometimes decrease with severe illness. Therefore, a low free T4 in the absence of systemic illness likely indicates true hypothyroidism. Testing a dog's TSH level can also help us to determine if the patient is really hypothyroid. Unfortunately, TSH testing can lack sensitivity and specificity, with up to 30% of hypothyroid dogs having levels within the normal range and up to 20% of sick euthyroid dogs having elevated TSH concentrations. The greatest benefit of TSH testing lies in combining this test with free T4 levels. In a dog with low free T4 levels and elevated TSH levels, hypothyroidism is very likely. Combining these two tests reduces the risk of overdiagnosing and overtreating this condition. Testing for thyroglobulin antibodies can be used to diagnose thyroiditis before hypothyroidism occurs, potentially playing a role in identifying potential hypothyroid dogs before the disease develops. Approximately 20% of clinically healthy and asystematic dogs with elevated antibody levels will progress to hypothyroidism within a period of a year. Even though this testing may have limited clinical significance, it can be valuable in making breeding decisions, especially within predisposed breeds. Canine thyroid structure and function can also be evaluated with the use of ultrasound, skintigraphy and biopsy. In most hospital settings, however, these tests are considered impractical, therefore they are rarely performed. Canine hypothyroidism is treated with a synthetic T4 known as levothyroxine. This medication is typically administered at the starting dose of 0.02 mg per kilograms every 12 hours. It is important to remember that in large dogs we should not exceed the doses of 0.8 mg per kilograms twice daily. Most dog owners will begin to notice clinical improvements within the first few weeks of starting treatment, and this treatment has minimal side effects when dosed appropriately. 
Response to the thyroid medication is monitored by measuring T4 levels three to four weeks after starting the treatment. Serum T4 levels should be measured at four to eight hours post pill. If the patient's T4 level is below normal or at the low end of the normal range, the dose of levothyroxine may be increased and the T4 level should be checked again three to four weeks later. If the dog's T4 is at the end of the normal range or just above normal, the dog can be maintained on the same dose. Once a dog has reached a maintenance dose of levothyroxine, the serum T4 levels should be rechecked in three months. If the levels are still normal at this time, the T4 levels should be rechecked every six months for long-term maintenance. With appropriate treatment, the prognosis for most cases of canine hypothyroidism is good. Exceptions include myxedema, coma, and cases of congenital hypothyroidism that are not diagnosed early. These cases carry a more guarded prognosis. Owners typically begin to see early signs of improvement within the first few weeks of treatment, with most signs revolving within four to eight weeks. Skin conditions that occur secondary to hypothyroidism may take longer to resolve, often several months, but can typically be well controlled with appropriate T4 regulation. The information presented in this video is based on the writings of Dr. Catherine Burnett. Remember to subscribe to our channel for more educational videos.